been there a while. I says, is it always like this? Because I thought, if it's always like this, there's no way I'm getting out of Nam without being killed or wounded. I was sent to infantry, AAT infantry. And so my role in Vietnam has to do with your MOS, which is your military occupational specialty. My MOS was 11 Bravo, 11B, which meant it was infantry. So I was infantry in Vietnam, and they put me in the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam. But for, but for us soldiers in the field, you, you had a heavy rucksack, maybe 80 to 90 pounds. First time I carried that thing in the heat. It was very hot, humid, and it just it just wore me out. And I didn't hop that far. It was just you got to get used to the heat and the humidity and carrying that. First week, 90 U.S. soldiers died and 26 weapons were taken. Although the 101st Airborne is known for its air attacks, not everyone was in an aircraft. Mike was in one of the groups on land. Uh, a platoon from another company, from one of our line companies that we were attached to, I think it was Delta Company, went down off the hill to, to patrol and, a, and a, a, a sniper started shooting them. And, um, he had killed some and wounded some, and it was almost getting dark, so recon platoon was ordered to go down and, and pick up the dead and wounded. So this was the first time that I actually went down and saw real close. And I remember us, we went down, and, and uh, typically the way you did it, if you brought a poncho down, and we went and grabbed this guy who was wounded bad, put him in the poncho and the four of us each took a corner and we were running up this hill back up the hill as fast as we could. I remember thinking and then I've I looked at these other guys who weren't shot and they and the look on their faces was just kind of like very scary. It's, it's heavy vegetation, heavy canopy jungle. You you can't see them. So when you go up they see you and they're firing at ground level. And uh and then I thought, and then I had time to think, I thought, you know, if my squad walks point again, a rifleman has to walk point. The guy who's carrying the M79, he isn't walking point. The RTO, the radio guy isn't walking point. Squad leader's not walking point. It's gotta be somebody with an M16, a rifleman. And only me or Velasquez, this other guy who is, is gonna walk point. And whoever walks point is gonna die. And so I had time to think about that, and I'm thinking, you know, I don't want to die, but if he tells me to walk point, I'll, I'll walk point. I won't refuse an order. And so as soon as guys started going up, running up this hill, this short hill, they started firing. And the lead guys going along the same trail, what we didn't know was that the enemy had a spider hole right off the side of this trail. A spider hole is a small hole big enough for one enemy and he was camouflaged at the time. No one saw the spider hole when we all walked by him earlier. Well, he had gotten out and was waiting and he shot probably one of the first guys down this trails. So then a few guys were pinned down there and I don't know what number I was up, maybe six or seven, but uh, as I started running up the hill, the the bullets were going by me, and they and when they go by you, they make a loud popping noise, very loud popping, and and so I was just kind of uh, bracing myself for getting hit in the back. When the operation ended at eight o'clock a.m. on August fourteenth, nineteen sixty nine, the one hundred first Airborne had killed ninety four enemies, destroyed five hundred thirty bunkers, three hundred ninety two structures, two mortar emplacements and produced 197 sustained fires and 70 secondary explosions. This operation was one of the last operations the 101st Airborne was involved in. Although Operation Lamar Plain was the most known operation, veterans still had many stories to tell. And it's because of those stories that I can put together a better understanding of the complexities of the Vietnam War.